everyone. I think I'm live. Uh, thank you so much for coming, whether you're listening from the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra's Facebook page or my own Facebook page or the Baltimore Symphony Musicians Facebook page. I'm so happy to have the opportunity to play for you tonight from my living room. Um, it's a very bizarre experience for me as a musician. I've never um, really had concerts from my living room before, especially for an audience that I can't see. Um, and I'm also uh, very new to the technology involved in this, so that makes me a little bit nervous. But I have some people that I, I really have to thank um, for tonight uh, for making what I hope will be much better sound than my previous two concerts possible. Um, I have to thank my old friend Josh Kramer for a beautiful microphone that he's lent me. Uh, Josh, thank you so much, and also thank you for your help with all the electronics and programs and restarting the computer and, and all of that. Um, the oboe is a really difficult instrument to record. Um, it frequently overloads because of the pungent nature of the tone and it makes things like phones and computers just sound terrible. Um, but Josh is a really great recording producer, so he knows all about the good microphones and I think I have one now. Um, I also have to thank Brian Santero for walking me through how to stream um, because even once I had the good microphone and I was trying to stream on Facebook, it still sounded terrible, but I think we have the levels set appropriately now. Um, I have to thank Chuck Lamar from the Baltimore Symphony um, Audio Division, um, who also helped me with the streaming, and Rosie Constantine, who helped set all of this up from the BSO. Um, so this is a little bit of a personal project for me, since I'm a musician at home. Um, I, I feel the need to play, and it's really hard to just play by yourself, especially when you play an instrument like the oboe, which is really um, throughout history been used uh, primarily as an orchestral instrument, um, which is my real job, is to play in the Baltimore Symphony. Um, of course, there are a number of concertos and sonatas uh, written for the oboe in a solo capacity, but for the instrument by itself alone, this is a very unusual um, instrumentation. So there's not a ton of music, um, and um, I set out about two years ago, um, two and a half years ago, to see what it would be like to perform a recital by myself. And I stood up for an hour on stage and it was one of the worst experiences of my life. And I swore that I would never do it again, um, but, uh, and I started doing it again somehow. Um, and uh, it, it's better than it was two years ago. Uh, after the first concert two years ago, I was like dead and I felt worse than childbirth and it was, it was terrible. So I said I'd never do it again. And then, um, you know, circumstances changed and I found myself about, nine months ago, um, or six months ago, uh, needing to play by myself again. So, so there I was, and um, it's, been, it's been better. I've um, found some great music. I'm in the process of finding more great music. Um, and so I wanna share my journey with you. This is the third concert I've done. I'm gonna do every um, Friday at 7.30, um, at least until I make my way through the Telemann Fantasies. This is the first piece that I'm gonna play for you. I've already played the first three. This is number four. Oh, look, I even have this, this is fancy. See, now you should have the program information. Uh, so there are Telemann's dates. So he wrote this piece nearly 300 years ago. Um, this is a new one for me. I've never played this one before. Um, a lot of students study these pieces. They were originally written for flute and they were probably designed to be played in a living room, very much like mine. Um, you know, 300 years ago, the entertainment offerings were very different than they are now, or at least than they were a month ago uh, in the United States. Um, and so uh, basically everybody played something. These pieces could be played by students, they could be played by professionals. They were written in all of the keys available to the flute at the time. So they started in A, A major and A minor, and now we're up to B flat major. Um, so this is the first, uh, this is the fourth Telemann fantasy. It has three uh, movements there, Andante, Allegro, and Presto. And I hope you enjoy it.
Um, so the most famous piece um, for oboe alone was written by Benjamin Britten. Excuse me, I gotta swab my oboe out. I should have brought a swab over here. Uh, I have some water in my octave key. Um, and uh, Benjamin Britten wrote this piece in 1951, and everyone lives in the shadow of this piece who ever tries to write a piece for solo oboe. Um, Britten clearly had the, the works of Bach for solo instruments in mind. Um, Bach, of course, wrote six um, suites for um, cello with six movements each, and he wrote uh, six sonatas and partitas, three each for violin solo, also with six movements each. So um, Britton wrote six movements here. Let me see if I can give you the program details. Um, so in his six, uh, six Metamorphoses after Ovid, um, he chose a myth for um, about change, about metamorphosis. Um, so I'm gonna play the first three movements of the Britton, and then I'm gonna play the first three movements of two other pieces um, designed sort of after after the Britain or after each other in some way. Um, so uh, the first one is Pan, who played upon the reed pipe, which was Syrinx, his beloved. I'm just told you can't hear me when I'm talking. The reason is, I'm sorry, I have to have the levels set for the oboe, so I have to talk very loud because the oboe is loud and the talking is not as loud as the oboe, so I have to remember to talk louder. Uh, and my friends, you can stop texting me now. I got it. Please don't text me. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk louder and I'm going to play the oboe normally. Um, yeah, so I have to turn the levels down to not overload the system with the oboe. Sorry about that. Now, anyway, the first one is um, Pan, who played upon Syrinx, uh, who played upon the reed pipe, which was Syrinx, his beloved. Chariot, oh, I'm sorry, louder. 
The next is Phaeton, who rode upon the chariot of the sun for one day and was hurled into the river Padus by a thunderbolt. Niobe, who lamenting the death of her 14 children, was turned into a mountain. So there are three more wonderful movements of this piece, which I will play next week. Um, but I wanted to give a taste of all three of these um, works that I'm including tonight beyond the Telemann. Um, the next piece for me is groundbreaking. I wonder if you can still see me. Um, it is by the French composer Gilles Silvestrini. And he wrote this piece in 1999. So, I guess that's new music, but I'm going to play even new mu more new than that. 
afterwards. Um, so he was clearly inspired by the Briton. Um, and instead of using Roman mythology, he used French art uh, to inspire his six movements. And the first movement um, is this picture up in the left. You can see it over here. Um, Hotel de, pardon my French, sorry. Hotel de Roche Noire à Trouville. And um, for me, you can really hear the flag. You see that flag rippling in the breeze there. Um, with, he uses these amazing whole tone scales that he rips around like wind. Um, uh, the, what he does with the oboe in this piece is no one has ever done anything like that before. It really takes the sort of technical um, demands of the instrument to the next level. Um, so that, um, that is the first one. Let me show you the second one. And this is the second piece. Um, this is a painting by Camille Pissarro, and it's Potager et Ab and Fleur, uh, Printemps, that means spring. So this is a vegetable garden, you can see at the bottom, and uh, flowering trees. Now, if you look at the, uh, the Britain that I just played for you before, it was very angular, um, the second movement. And for me, I had trouble seeing the angular nature of this one in the painting. The music is very clear, it's very angular, um, except for the middle section, which is very bird-like. Um, so I guess that's from the, the flowering trees. But for me, I guess the angular stuff must be the difference between um, this dichotomy between the buildings and the sort of natural element in the front. And the third one that I'm going to play is Boulevard de Capuchin. And um, this is a, an amazing piece for the oboe, if I can pull it off. It's, um, for me, what, what he's done with the instrument is extraordinary. If I do it right, it should sound kind of like two, two oboes. Um, and he does that by having one strong voice and one sort of weaker, lighter voice. So you see the dark and the light sort of separated by a line here. And that's, that's very um, clear. Um, okay, I wish I could turn the text messages off my phone. So I don't know how to do that. I mean, off my computer. So if you could stop texting me, my friends, right now, that would be really awesome. Thank you. Um, anyway, I'm going to play these three Silvestrini um, etudes for you, six etudes right now.
So that one's pretty, pretty wild and crazy, but I love it. And there are three more also fantastic movements that I'm going to do on the next show. I hope you'll join in next Friday night. Um, but uh, another reason I wanted to do these 11 concerts that I'm doing, besides learning the Telemann and playing them in public, is because there's a bunch of other music that I want to learn too. And um, I became aware this summer of a piece by the fantastic American composer Alyssa Morris. Um, and I became aware of Alyssa um, because of a piece that she wrote for oboe and piano that is wonderful um, called Four Personalities Based on the Hartman Personality Test. And I've played that a bunch in the last year or so. And I heard she had a solo oboe piece. And um, so I actually wrote her. That's the advantage of living at the same time as a composer. And I said, hey, do you have anything else? What kind of music do you have? I love playing your four personalities. What have you got? And so she sent me this music. And because of this crazy time, uh, I had the opportunity to learn it. I wouldn't have had the opportunity to learn it otherwise. Last week, I played the fifth of her sixth, six pieces. And um, I am going to play now her first, um, the first three, like I did of, um, sorry, like I did of the Silvestrini and the Britain. I'm going to play her first three. Um, sorry, let me get the music stand. Um, the first three, and so very much like Silvestrini, she went to painters, but instead of French Impressionist painters, she went to American women painters. And so here you can see the three paintings that she used for her three, first three of her six collision etudes. Um, so here's the first one. Um, this is a painting by Mary Cassatt. Now Alyssa is really a super nice person, and I'm very embarrassed to say this, but I had a wonderful interview with her this week that I videotaped with all of my wonderful new equipment and I was going to share it ahead, ahead of time so anyone who wanted to know more about her and her process of composing and this wonderful piece and her other pieces could learn and I had a beautiful side-by-side -side interview and it had no sound. And so she gave me an hour of her time and I screwed up the sound and there was zero sound. But um, I'm hoping to get a smaller version for next time. Um, but I'm going to try to paraphrase, and I'm sure I won't do as good of a job as Alyssa, but um, she tried to collide two ideas with each of her pieces. So the first, you have this sort of nature scene, but Summertime is also a jazz, a jazz favorite. So she took the chords from that, and she, um, jazz is very important to her. She studied jazz. Uh, jazz is also in her other um, Four Personalities piece. And she took that, um, she took a bunch of different solos from different famous artists and tried to take little snippets and weave them with her own material across, um, across this tune and still make it sound natural. I'm sure she'll do a better job explaining than I did. Um, this next one, the second one, you will see um, very much like the Silvestrini and the Britain, 
has this emphasis on f groups of five, five notes, five, uh, the time signature of five something frequently. And five is very unnatural for us. We can understand two and three very easily in our body, but five is always, is always awkward. And it, um, for me, it, it, um, it's characteristic of both the Britain and the Silvestrini second movement. And clearly she had that in mind here. She explained to me something very interesting that she drew a line across this painting and she plotted it as time, as time in this movement. And each of the colors that she passed through, she used, um, Scriabin has a color wheel of some nature. I'm sorry, I don't use the right word. Um, and so she went with the chords and the notes that go with those colors for this movement. And for the last movement that I will play today, remember there are three more and they're coming next week. Um, she used this Georgia O'Keeffe painting. This one is very straightforward because if you look at the lines of this painting, it's almost identical in the oboe line. So you'll, you'll see that. Um, uh, and hopefully I can get her to explain the collision. There's a middle section that's, that's different and, and the collision there um, that she has. Um, but it's really a fantastic work. Um, I'm just learning it. I just, you know, picked it up five days ago. So when we learn things as musicians, it's very important to play them in public. This is a, this feels like public or kind of worse actually to me because there's this whole element that I don't understand of technology. Um, but as we learn, we, we learn in public. And so it's very important to, to play things in public if you want to really learn a piece. So it's, it's sort of, um, trial by fire being thrown in the deep end. I'm learning it quickly. Anyway, these are the first three movements of Alyssa Morris's Summertime. Make sure I don't have any water in my keys.
So thank you all so much for coming tonight. Oh, louder. Thank you all so much for coming tonight. Such a pleasure to play for you. Even under these very bizarre circumstances, I hope it was a way to get your mind off current events and to a different place, uh, just temporarily. And um, if you enjoyed this, I hope you come back in the future. I'm gonna be doing it um, on Friday nights at 7.30, certainly from my Facebook page. It's at Catherine Needleman Oboist. So um, hope to see you again. And I know some people had wanted to ask questions or have like a virtual green room after the concert. So I'm just going to go to my own Facebook page and start a new live stream there if you're interested in doing that. Um, but thank you so much. Uh, thank you for supporting music, for still listening to music. We all need music still. And um, it was my pleasure to play for you tonight. Thank you.